Hello, my name is Barry Slaughter Olson, and I am a professor of translation and interpreting at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey. I'm also a conference interpreter and uh, a member of the IEC training committee. And my area of focus is technology and how technology is affecting interpretation. So today, what I'd like to do is ask three questions and then try to answer them. These three questions have to do with technology and how it is affecting and may affect our profession in the future. So, um, first question. How will a technology affect the interpreting profession and how is it affecting interpreting today? I guess my short answer to that would be we are seeing more and more opportunities emerge because of technology. Because with new technologies, we are able to provide interpreting services in ways that we haven't been able to do that before. For example, we're in an interpreting booth right now, and it's a great place to be. We've got a wonderful view of a, a beautiful conference room here at the European Commission, and this is a place where we would all love to work. Um, however, a lot of multilingual communication is now taking place outside the conference room. So how do we provide those services? The answer really is technology. Uh, there are platforms and systems that make it possible to provide interpretation remotely, consecutively, or simultaneously. To do it over the phone, to use um, tablet computers, or to use significantly large and somewhat expensive video conferencing systems. This is something that's been going on for quite a few years, but what we're seeing now, and this is what I think new interpreters, students, and even people like me that have been in the market for a while uh, need to pay attention to, and that is the technology that it used to take to provide remote interpreting services the price and the complexity is coming down very quickly. So that means in the past where it may have taken um, a extremely expensive uh, video conferencing room to be able to provide the service, now most people are able to participate in video conferences using any endpoint. It could be a telephone, it could be a smartphone with a camera, it could be a laptop computer, or it could be a large telepresence room. And all of those different endpoints can talk to one another. And so what that means is more and more people are participating in these kinds of virtual interactions, and we're seeing these virtual interactions cross borders. And the question is, how do we insert interpretation into those new virtual interactions? Because if I can be quite frank, I doubt that it's going to be from a wonderful interpreting booth like this. So we'll have the opportunity to work in many different ways. Just to give you an example, I interpret meetings that take place in cyberspace simultaneously from my office several times a month. And that was not happening two years ago. So the opportunities are there. Familiarize yourselves with the technology and don't rule anything out. I think I'd, I'll move on to the second question now. And that is, will technology remove interpreters from the meeting room? Um, I think I would preface my answer to that by saying the multilingual meeting room is not disappearing. There are more multilingual meetings than ever before, really. And they're taking place in wonderful uh, conference centers, conference rooms, boardrooms, uh, hotels where booths are installed, and that kind of work is not going to disappear. But there are efforts underway and successful efforts where interpreters are being removed from the conference room and providing services remotely. Of all of the use cases that are out there for remote interpreting, um, that use case where the delegates are still face-to-face -face, but the interpreter is remote is the one 
I think that scares us the most as conference interpreters. We don't want to be removed from that interaction, but it is happening. It's not happening in large amounts, but it is happening, and I do expect that trend to increase. Um, probably first and foremost in the private sector, and after it is proven in the private sector, that's when you may see it start to make inroads into the public sector and to international organizations. But that's not going to happen rapidly, I don't think. So the short answer is yes, but it's not going to be from one day to the next. Now, let me share my last question. Will technology replace me as an interpreter? That's another one that many people are afraid of. I know that every time I see a new um, speech-to-speech translation app or program, um, I think, could it be? Because the way the press releases are written or the way articles are written in the mainstream press, they give that, that impression that, well, it's done now. Technology can do it. Not a problem. Now you can talk to anybody, anywhere, anytime. But the simple fact of the matter is that that is very far from the truth. I've had the opportunity to participate in beta testing of different platforms that are providing speech-to-speech -speech, uh, translation. Notice I'm not saying machine interpretation because really all that's happening with these platforms is they are adding speech recognition, which has gotten very, very good in the last couple of years. They tack that on to uh, a speech-to-text processing program that is then put into a machine translation engine that has all sorts of um, corpora, bilingual corpora that are matched up. It can use statistical machine translation. It can use dictionaries. There are a number of things that it does, and it does it very quickly. And then it produces the text on the other end. And if you want to add speech synthesis on the other end, you can. But the simple fact of the matter is, it is still extremely flawed, even though it has improved. I expect it to continue to improve. But I'm not afraid of being replaced in my lifetime, if I can be very frank. Um, the fact of the matter is that it is still algorithm driven. And while those algorithms can learn based on large amounts of data, which has been provided for the most part by humans, they can come up sometimes with some startlingly amazing uh, translations. But for every one start startlingly amazing translation, you may end up with five or six or 10 or more um, total disasters that don't make any sense or that are humorous to say the least. And to think that you could apply something like this to a, an international meeting context or even think about this as well, there are so many aspects to it. If you listen to the synthesized speech, how long can you take listening to a synthesized voice? When what we learn in the classroom, what we learn in the interpreting uh, lab is how do we control our voice? How do we convey emotion? How do we help people understand what the original speaker is saying? How do we convey all of that? And that is amazingly complex. And that is human. And that is interpreting. So. Are we going to be replaced? No. Um, are there going to be situations in which speech-to-speech -speech translation and interpreting apps will be used? Definitely. But that's not because it's encroaching upon high-level quality interpretation. It is because the need for linguistic services is expanding very rapidly. And so on the fringes, you may have people, consumers, making use of an app just when they need to get directions or they need to, or they would just simply like to converse with someone when they don't know the language. But as you work closer into the circle of quality, what will remain are interpreters who have carefully prepared themselves and have done their very best to make sure that what they offer is quality. So my 
My overall message is simply to say that there are amazing technological um, developments for delivering our services in many new ways. That includes webinars. That includes teleconferencing. It includes uh, regular conference calls because so many people use the telephone to do business and they need interpretation on those calls. But it also includes video conferencing, which is going to become ubiquitous in the not so distant future. And we need to be ready with answers to say, this is how I can provide quality interpreting on these platforms. So don't be afraid, explore, use them, know what they're good for and what they're not good for. I'll wrap up by sharing a quote with you that I think is one of the best that I have ever heard regarding interpreting and technology. It's by uh, a wonderful technician by the name of Bill Wood, who developed uh, wonderful interpreting consoles in the early 70s. This is what he said to a group of interpreters uh, when we were talking about this several years ago in Washington, D.C. He said, interpreters will never be replaced by technology. They will be replaced by interpreters who use technology. And I'll end with that. I hope you've enjoyed what I've shared with you today.